All right, so for my defibrillator, I am going to do, I'm going to start at a, I'm going to go to the ECG menu, and I'm going to do a normal sinus rhythm at a rate, and uh, we'll do 60. Yeah, all right, so right now, we're getting our artifact right now, so we're getting our 60 BPM, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull off a lead on each every on each and every single one for the defib tester, and we're going to see if it alarms as well as says something. So, I'm just going to go along. good. I did what I was supposed to do. So we can pass all of those. All right, so now we're doing a automated normal sinus rhythm test. What it will do is it's going to automate 120 beats per minute and we're going to basically see does this show what that is, have, is forcing this thing to do? Is it going to do what it does? So we're forcing 120 beats per minute into this and seeing if it actually will do what it says. So I'm going to hit start test and it's going to send a command to my defib tester. And we are at 120, exactly what it is. All right, so put 120, test passed, okay. Now we're going to do the heart rate alarm test. So. What we're going to do here is go to the little alarm button right there. We're going to hit that, and if I remember correctly, go to a limits. No, oh, no. I'm going to turn. No. All right. So we're going to turn the limits on. We're going to go to all alarms. Upper limit is enabled. Lower limit is enabled. Um, let's get a sinus rhythm going on here. All right, so we got a sinus rhythm right now, so we can stop that. Okay, so we want to turn the upper limit to 150. So we'll just raise the upper limit to 150. And the lower limit is going down to 35. And so what this does is, if it goes past 150, which is beats per minute, if it goes, if somebody's heart rate goes past 150, this will alarm that goes past or below, sorry, if it goes below 35, it will alarm also. Let's see, so, pass, 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 pass. Okay, so we're going to set the simulator to, all right, so we're gonna set the simulator to 30 beats a minute. 30. My NIBP is currently running, so we should eventually get to, I have it 29. All right, so we're good there. Okay, so it thinks we've flatlined, which is not the case. Okay, so we're at 30 right now, which is fine. That's exactly what we want. So it's alarming like what it's supposed to do. Now we're going to set the simulator to, let's do 160. We're at 160 now, so it should start alarming. High pressure, all right. 
Okay, so we are at the high, and now we're going to we're going to go back down to 120 now. So we should be good. All right. So we're good there. We sent it, we set it back to 120. Now, uh, when I did that, it eliminated that alarm. So that's good, good. Uh, good, good. All right, so everything's good. So we're gonna turn back the lower limit to off and the upper limit to off likewise. They don't need to be on anymore. So now we're gonna do a power supply test. So we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna take the battery out. Now, you have to actually have a battery uh, tester for this. So the tester that Zolt provides is just an old, or I guess a new battery, I don't know. But it looks like this. And it has the current switch right here. And it's just, it says battery simulator. And the part number for that is 9100-3055-TF. And I have the revision E. So all this does is we're hooking it up here where the battery goes and um, I think it's 12 volts yeah 12 volts so we have to actually uh, input into this unit so now the power supply I'm using is the um, HP E 3633A which is the one that they recommend um, the multimeter doesn't really matter it's the U30401 U3401A so, all right, so we're going to want to go to my range. I want to increase. Let's pull that out. So we're going to go to 12 volts. Turn off the output. We want current. We want DC current. So what we're doing is... Uh, we're basically seeing how much current it pulls. So uh, it has to be between 0.583 milliamps to uh, 0.770 milliamps. So we are going to turn the output on, which is at 12. That's good. And we're going to go here. We're going to hold this little button down that was on there before, the current button. So. I'm going to also do a hold function. So my current is, according to my multimeter, 0.5983 milliamps. All right, so 0 0.5983 milliamps. We're good there. And now we are actually turning on the unit and restoring manufacture defaults. So I'm going to turn the unit back on. Okay. So we're going to go to the little gear here. Sure it's past. All right. To the little gear here, we're going to go to, I think it's, no, where is it? All right. So supervisor, okay. Supervisor, we're going to enter our code in. Then we're going to go to display configuration, device info, and restore all factory defaults. Are you sure? Why certainly. And it'll do a restore of the whole function, which means all alarms have been enabled. So we're going to get all that stuff again. It's been factory de defaulted. So we're going to be getting all those alarms again. So it's going to be very annoying. But whatever. So we're going to turn this back off. And we're going to unhold that. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. But we should have a little bit higher current. Possibly. They actually lowered it to 0 0.47 milliamps to 1.25 milliamps. Usually I get pretty close to 1.25 milliamps. So, so 
So we're averaging about mm, 0.5938 milliamps. So, milliamps. Okay, so now's the fun part. I'm going to turn this off. Power you off. Don't need those anymore. We're going to put our normal battery back. Alright, so we're going to go down here. We're going to change it to DFib. This is our shock test now. And we're going from 5 joules, I think it's 5, 50, 100, and 200. So right now we're doing 5 joules. So we're going to go down to energy select down here. Knock it all the way down to 5. And we're going to hit start. And this will actually, it tells us please charge and wait, or yeah, please charge and wait for defibrillation. So we're going to, it says defib now. I'm going to defib now. And this will print out. So it's retrieving the waveform. All right. So it tested at five. All right. So the low limit is 4.3 joules. High limit is 5.8 joules. Set by Zoll. I received 5.3 volts or 5.3 joules. So it passed the test, and it shows a, a very good waveform of the whole thing. So um, I'll show you guys later. Maybe that'll help a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go to next here. We're gonna go to 50 joules, same process as before. Going to energy select, scroll up to 50, um, start this. Please charge the defibrillator and wait. Gonna charge it, defib now. Retrieving the waveform, there's my waveform. Peak amperage over time. Peaks are on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. All right, so I got 54.7 joules. Perfect, right in there. Got a software update. Uh, we'll worry about you later. Okay, so next. All right, so next is 100 joules. Charge it up. So I received 110.7 joules, which is falls perfectly in between. And now we are doing 200 joules. So the maximum this unit can do is 200. And that's what we're going to be testing at. So we're going to start that, charge her up. Retrieving the waveform, and I got 232.1 joules. Again, that is pretty much what's the difference on that one. Actually, yeah, pretty much does. All right, so the next we're going to do is the disarm test. This is absolutely the most annoying test I have ever had to do on any unit. What it does is if you keep this unit here on any, any joule amount, when you hit select energy and you hit charge, if you don't disarm that charge or shock somebody, then it will automatically disarm after 50 seconds. So, supposedly. It's very noisy, very annoying. I actually will usually walk out of the room while I do this. So, I'm going to show you what it does, but I will not sit here the whole time. So, I'm going to charge up 200. Charge it up. There's no test that it needs to do here. I just have to verify. So charging, charging, charging. 